Life Fun Rehearsed on CJAD 800. Brought to you by Marco Vendramini of IG Private Wealth Management. MarcoVendramini.com. Welcome back to Life on Rehearse. We're rocking it out with Led Zeppelin, aren't we, Curry? <laughs> My name is Matt Del Vecchio, specializing in free retirement home search and senior transition support. And I'm Corey Sirota, clinical social worker and psychotherapist, specializing in grief and loss. So, Corey, uh, you were away. I was away, and while I was away, you were on TV with Stephanie, and that was very impressive. You know, thank you. Very fortunate, uh, Stephanie. My wife, Stephanie Cadu, and I were uh, on uh, global television talking about helping moms and dads in transition, which is what we do in our day-to-day lives, and uh, uh, really enjoyed ourselves. It's a fun experience, and, and yeah, thank you for mentioning that. Um, um, I do, Corey, have to mention one uh, very important uh, thing. We we lost a great Montrealer um, on Friday night, Av Morrow. Um, some of you may know or may have heard of Av Morrow. If you've walked into a school or a hospital with shiny floors and clean washrooms or even at one point in time dried your hands with an Av Morrow dryer, Av Morrow uh, passed away Friday. And uh, a real I was an Av Morrow guy for 20 years, part of my family, I consider. Right. And uh, God bless, a real mentor for me, a pioneer in the industry received the Order of Canada. So uh, uh, condolences to the uh, the Morrow family and Maddie Chinks, Paul Golden, and the entire crew. Um, we lost a good one, Corey. Yeah, so um, now, Very what do we have coming up? Oh, so on that, not that <laughs> note, um, it is actually my pleasure to introduce Susanna Baum, who is a presentation skills specialist, trainer, and executive speech coach. Susanna helps entrepreneurs, business professionals, and experts create and deliver um, presentations that help them stand out as a leader. She is the past president of the Canadian Association of Professional Speakers, the Montreal chapter, and today she's actually here to talk to us about the importance of consistency between what you say and your body language. So welcome to the show, Susanna. Thank you, Corey and Matt. Yeah, welcome. <laughs> it's, it's really something, as a social worker, I spend a lot of time looking at the consistency between what someone says and what their body language or facial expressions are. So this is a topic that's so near and dear to my heart, and I'm so glad that you're, we have you to talk, <laughs> talk to us about it. So let's start with why is body language so important in communication, and how important is it to be consistent between your body and your words? Well, you know, it's it's all about perception, Corey. So while it may take a little time for us as we're listening to someone talk to process what is it that they're saying, if they have a certain tick or something that makes us feel like they're not consistent, we will judge faster based on what we see than based on the time it takes us to process what we hear them saying. So that's why it's it's really important for us to be mindful when we are standing, whether it's in front of one person or whether we are in front of a group, to know that they're not only listening to what we say, but they're listening, they're, they're watching how we say it, and they're watching to make sure that we are consistent in our facial expressions and our movements as we say it, or else we lose credibility. You know, sure. I'm I'm fascinated by this this field, Suzanne, of of body language. Uh, Corey, we talked about this global TV uh, interview, so of course you have to see yourself and how you did on right, on TV, right. right? Well, I could not believe uh, how I use my hands, my hand gestures. Now, I have a good excuse. I'm Italian. You know, it's right. part of our okay. DNA. We have yeah, to do yeah. a lot of hand gestures. Now, Susanna, uh, I guess that could work for you or against you. And we're going to talk different parts of the body. So let's start with the hands. Okay. So uh, regarding the hands, what should you do with the hands? Yeah. So that's a, a really common question that I get because for a lot of my clients who are, who they hire me because they have to give presentations, whether it's at work, whether it's at conferences, and and it's not always comfortable, right? We don't know, can we move our hands? Do they have right. to stay at our sides? What if I'm holding something? And and I never have the, I don't necessarily have the answer that people love because I say it depends, right? What you do <laughs> with your hands really depends on you because you have to be faithful to what feels right for you and your own speaking style. Now, I have seen people try to keep hands at their sides when you know they are just dying to move them. <laughs> and and that's painful for me as an audience member and, and a coach, but also as an audience member to watch because I could tell that they are not comfortable standing up there. And I've seen people try to hold back their hand gestures, but I know they just want to let them out. So 
I often say, you know, it really does take practice, number one. But the second thing is, is that just be mindful that whatever you're doing, you don't do too much of. So, so if you are much. waving your your hands yeah. because you're Italian, Matt, <laughs> um, that's great because it allows you to come out and speak at your normal speaking style. But if you cannot, if they are constantly moving and your body is constantly moving, your hands are constantly in a fidgeting movement mode, that will eventually get distracting. So you have to be mindful of what is feeling right for me and what is a little bit too much. Well, you know, she did not say, Matt, keep your hands at yes, your side right. the whole time. That's all. Because no. if, if you would have said that, that's it. Finish. Yeah. You know, pack it in. I, I, I want to <laughs> tell you something, Matt. I always talk with my hands and I, I to the point that if I couldn't use my hands, it's almost like having a speech impediment. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Absolutely. Because for me, it's, it's part of. But I agree with you. It could be way too much. Yeah. So what are maybe what should I be doing with my hands or like what about certain hand movements like triangulation and things like that that I've heard about or you watch someone you know put their hands a certain way what what what's what's up with that well, the the triangulation. I think we're talking about that. A few months ago, I was uh, I was on breakfast TV because I was asked to come on to speak about the body language of the candidates in one of the debates. Mm. And one thing that uh, Francois Legault had done was he he put his hands in sort of a triangle with the the point up, and and that that's really a, I, I'm hatching a plan. I have a plan, mm. uh, which is Ooh. which is to show others that he is in control. Right. This is in control. You can trust me. I know what I'm doing. I know where we're going. Right. So it's really all about managing the perceptions when you get really good <laughs> with body with with body language. And and I think when you hit that political sphere, you you get coached on it and you have to be very aware of how people are perceiving you and how every movement, movement of your hands, movement of your eyes, your body, everything and, and even your your legs, like everything matters, because what you don't want to be is that uh it's, you know, when you sit at, uh, you talk to your parents or, you know, that, that crazy uncle and you're like, hey, did you see the debates last night? And he'll be like, you know, that guy, he's just shady. Uh-huh. That shady character, right? Doesn't matter what they said, what their plan was, just their mannerisms have to, the mannerisms really have to uh, match so that so that your audience and whoever okay. you're speaking to can can have faith and trust you. Absolutely right. We're talking effective communication here on Life Unrehearsed with professional public speaking and communication expert Susanna Baum. She does know her stuff, and it, and it is intriguing just to to get your perspective on on uh, on that. So we've talked the hands, we've talked gestures. I know facial expressions are a really big deal. So what would you suggest in terms of? You know, proper facial expressions, if you can even control it, because sometimes I don't even think you can control it. Boy, you know, there's there's a lot to talk about with, with facial expressions. So I'll, I'll talk about um, the smile as one thing. Um, it's important when you're in front of an audience to watch, monitor your smile, because how your teeth show can be perceived in different ways. So if you show wow. your lower, if you show your lower teeth, uh, in a smile, that's sometimes taken as a little bit more aggressive and threatening. If you show your your upper teeth like a full smile, then it is a full, friendly smile, open, engaging, and and to be aware of the smirk, you know, where one side comes up because that's uh, that's where you're showing that that you're not really that interested oh, in the other person. And this is not just, by the way, about the public speaking lecture. This is someone in a job interview, absolutely, like. Someone talking, uh, trying to get a date. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, and what message? Are absolutely, you sending? and and the eyes are also extremely important in this too. That when you smile, that the smile reaches the eyes, because if it's a fake smile, it won't come into the eyes, and it's not necessarily a Botox thing. It's really that <laughs> it could show nervousness or or shows, um, you know, that that you that there's a, a mistrust almost if the smile doesn't reach the eyes. Wow. Yeah, it is. You know, and we're even going to e- expand on that. Um, uh, just we got to head out to traffic first. But when we when we come back from traffic, Susanna, we, we, I'd like to um, talk a little bit more about that because whether you're talking to someone individually, it could be a husband, it could be a right. child, it could be in a little office presentation, or it could be in front of a hundred people. You know, how could you unknowingly be turning off your audience without even knowing it? So we want to talk a little bit more about that. But first, let's head out to the CJD Traffic Center with Mark Shalhoub. Life Fun Rehearsed on CJAD 800. Brought to you by Marco Vendramini of IG Private Wealth Management. MarcoVendramini.com. 
Welcome back. You're listening to Life Unrehearsed. I'm Corey Sirota with my co-host Matt Del Vecchio, and we are talking effective communication, if, if I could say it, <laughs> effective communication with professional public speaking and communications expert, Susanna Baum. Susanna, I know that this is absolutely a, a really important piece of this whole interview. People don't realize they can actually be turning people off whether it's one person or, again, a big group with certain body language. Can you address that? Absolutely. You know, that there are so many ways that we fidget our way out of uh, audience engagement or a good interview or a good conversation with, with a boss or, or part of your team or even a spouse. Um, so we talked before about hands. I would talk also part of body language is eye contact. I think uh, very often I've been at these networking events where you start getting into a conversation with someone, they're looking at you, and then they check out who else is walking in the room. They look over your shoulder, you'd, and you just see their eyes, they're gone, right? And that's and that's the signals that you are sharing and you're showing someone else that you are not interested in them. So understanding that the signals that you send and are you fidgeting too much? Are you shifting on your feet? Are you moving your arms around too much? Are your eyes everywhere? What are you showing your audience and how important they are to you? And the audience, again could be one person. So it's really about being so mindful about yourself because they will take away an impression of you, not necessarily based on what you said, but but how engaged you were with them and how uh, you were. Yeah. It's such an important point. And, and even mindful, I think that the challenge there, let's say I think eye contact is, is extremely important. Uh, and even if you know you need to do it, it does take some practice. You really mm-hmm. have to not shift. Uh, and like you say, some things in the background that caught your attention. It's an immediate indicator. You don't care about me anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, related to that, I know posture is very important. And the, the good old elbow space and leaning in and <laughs> leaning out. It's like, uh, we see that all the time where people are a little too close and, and others are a little very shy and too far. So how important is posture? Well, posture, you know, closeness is is a big piece, like you said, that when you're a little too close, it really depends on the relationship, right? I mean, too, you could get very close to someone. It could be appropriate if it's someone that you're close to, you're whispering something to them. And, and at the same time, it can also, from in a different situation with a different person, can be thought of as fairly aggressive. When I talk about posture with my clients, very often it's because there's a bit of a slouch in them. Their, their legs are too wide apart. Uh, and they they sometimes they willingly slouch to look smaller because they are feeling not as confident and they're, it's almost like they're covering themselves up a little. So when I will tell my clients when I notice a slouch and I know that they need to stand up a little bit taller, I will I will share with them that they they sort of need to focus on not necessarily pulling your shoulders back because then you shoot your chest out, but it's <laughs> and that's not necessarily appropriate. But uh, it's to be mindful of of your chest and to just bring it up and your 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 shoulders should follow, but in a more natural way. And and the posture really will make a difference in how the audience sees you in terms of confidence. The the more you slouch down, even if it's a small slouch, can make a big difference. And the and I've had my clients slouch. And I will say to them, can you just force yourself to stand up a little taller? And as soon as they do, the whole room will go, oh, wow. right? Because confidence. It really so confidence. confidence builder. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <clears throat> How that they makes are a perceived. lot of sense. That's Susanna Baum, professional public speaking and communication expert, teaching us how our body language speaks as loud, if not louder, than our words. Yeah. Um, so with all of this information, what would you say would help make someone or would is going to make someone a better speaker? I think it's whether it's, question. yeah, it's a big question, whether it's regarding body language or how you are structuring your speech or how you are uh, researching your topic, it really is so much about preparation. You have to know a little bit or, or get some insights mm-hmm. on what you look like when you are speaking to someone. Now, because I deal with public speaking training and I do coaching uh, and giving presentations, I will often recommend to my clients that they they tape themselves and then watch. You got to see what it is that you do. Sometimes you may think you're fidgeting with your hands, but in fact, it's your legs that are moving. You may not know that you're slouching. So first thing is really got to get a handle on what you look like in front of your audience. And second of all, if, if you are priming yourself more for a conversation and it's not appropriate for you to to tape yourself because you're about to have a conversation is again to be mindful of your your hands, your feet, the fidgeting. 
if you're going to be giving a presentation and you need you may need water because your mouth could get dry and that can be very distracting to an audience where is it going to be how are you going to hold it where are you going to stand in a room you know where is your screen going to be so that you don't have a back to the audience it's it's really about taking in your surroundings and and understanding that you know almost how to catch yourself if you are doing something wrong as well uh, Susanna Baum, um, professional public speaking and communication expert, and we're going to switch gears very quickly from body language to um, public speaking. And there's this, you know, a debate uh, about reading. Corey, even our guests, right. sometimes we always yeah. try to um, tell them, you know, come in with notes, but don't read notes. It sounds a little robotic, and I think that's the same for public speaking as well. What do you What do you say about, you know, you need to prep, but there's a difference between reading and being natural, I guess. Absolutely. So. You know, it's a tough one because it, there are some speeches that uh, that can be read, you know, like a like a wedding speech can be read. You don't have to memorize every single speech, but understand that that when you are up there at a, at a podium and you put your eyes down, your whole head goes down, your eyes go down. So you're immediately breaking connection with the audience because your eye contact has disappeared and your whole uh, demeanor changes because now your head is down. Your voice changes because now your, your neck is constricted a little. And that in itself will, will make it a little bit more difficult because what we really want is the audience to engage with you. And we are making it more difficult because we're cutting off the connection with them. Thank you so much, Susanna. You have given us so much information in such short a period of time. Only you can do this. Um, <laughs> very, very good. So, so well and so succinct. How can people get a hold of you? Because there's a lot more to know. There is a lot more to know. So my website is uh, SusannaBaum.com. So that's S-U-Z-A-N-N-A-H-B-A-U-M.com. My phone number is 514-247-1761. That's 514-247-1761. <laughs> One seven six one. Absolutely. Call me when you get on my website. You just hit the contact, and my email address is there as well. And you also have some great videos on there yeah. about training. So that's Excellent also website. great. Yeah, I have yeah. some great you. great yeah. videos. I have an online course yeah. that helps people create the the process of the course, and a lot of videos that can just help you answer answer some quick questions you may have about public speaking. Susanna, thank you thank very you. much. Corey, what do we have next week? Next week on Life and Rehearse, he's erasing hate messages all over the world. We're le- we're going to learn how and why Corey. Fl- or does it and if the holidays maybe you put you in a little bit of debt no worries uh, we have an expert from bdo that's going to help you dig your way out that's on life unrehearsed where you can catch us every sunday at 4 p.m